Shepard. I'm recording. I'm going to the right camera. And section 310. Uh, today we're going to talk about making our stuff look pretty. Well, what do you mean by stuff? I mean our output. So we're going to take a look at ways to make our output formatted, um, spacing, uh, commas, different things that we're going to put in to make them look basically prettier. Okay. The first way that we're going to talk about is this thing called string.format. And I didn't have many code listings for this because I jump around whether to do it or not. But string format is going to be one of two different ways that I'm going to show you you can set up your output so that it displays nicer. Now, the string format is a way that's included in the book. And this is section 310. There used to be another section in the book over here, this decimal format class that he no longer includes in the book, but I have an example on D2L that you can access and we'll talk about in a little bit that'll show you a second option uh, for a way to be formatting your output. I get people like both, but we're going to start with this string format because this string format will work with our console that's our system.out.printf but it'll also help us to format our data so we can see it in a j option pane message box as well so for string for string dot format method okay what you're going to see is the formatted string and i'll show you in more detail what that looks like uh, it's a string with some placeholders, actually they're called format specifiers, that I will then say, okay, right here I want you to insert a variable and I want you to put it in in a certain way. For example, yeah. format it to two decimal places. After I have all of these format specifiers in the string, I'm then going to have my argument list, which will be variables that will then get moved over and put in each of the locations with the specifiers okay so in my format string again i'm going to have these specifiers that are going to work like a placeholder and i'll be able to put variables in all right so we're going to start by saying yeah as a programmer you can use the console window if you want and do system dot out dot print f and then inside of here is where we're going to have this whole formatted string okay for example some things i want to take a look at what if i say i want to print out a double and the key letter for a double is an f okay so i have my string my format string inside double quotes the first thing in parentheses so i have parentheses double quotes the temp is now i have a parenthesis this tells me that one of my arguments is going to come into this spot. Okay. So the, the, the percent sign. Okay. says something's going to go here. The F says it's going to be a double. My variable will be a double. So I have percent sign point two F. Now the point two is me setting my precision. I'd like it to go to two decimal places. After I'm done uh, with uh, the format specifier, I have degrees and double quotes. So that's my entire string, comma. Now I have a spot, my specifier, there's only one. So I have one variable that I wanna put in here. So there are some examples in the book and that's what we're basically taking a look at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over and share my screen and go to jgrass and i'm just going to start to type some so in jgrass i have a dummy program set up and it's basically um i have public class format x for examples public static void main this is kind of a skeleton that i drew up so i want to create a new variable i'm going to create a double uh, can you all see my, my screen? 
Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna create a double. I'm gonna use temp, and we're gonna create temp to be 234.567. Just created a, a crazy variable, calling it temp. Now I wanna work on displaying it. So I'm gonna do system, that's duty, that's not system. System dot out dot print F. And now I'm gonna put the uh, parentheses, double quote, the temp is space. And now this is where I'm gonna put in my format specifier. Uh, I'm, want it, I'm gonna put the percent dot, I want it to go to two decimal places, 0.2 F. The F again is for a double. And then I end the double quotes comma, I put in temp, and with a little luck, 234.567, this will in fact compile. I think I should probably save it because I have not. And what did I call this? Uh, format EX. At, at the end of system.out.print, you have an F instead of a T. Uh, it should be print F. Yeah, okay. My mistake, thank you. Okay, and now that it's saved, let's with a little luck see if it'll run. If not, I have a whole bunch of experts that will tell me why it's not running. And why is it not running? Because I forgot the equal sign. Double temp equals 234.567. That's my radio voice. All right, now I try to run it and compile it. And I'm going to see that it does, in fact, my output says in the console window, the temp is 234.57. Okay, I set it to 234.567. And I said, oh, yeah, I only wanted it to go to two decimal places. And um, yeah, it, uh, it rounded up in those two. So now my curiosity is killing me. Uh, what if I made this a four, a point four? Will it go five, six, seven, zero? Or will it cut that zero off? And if I run it, I see I get for the output 234.5670. So whatever I put after that decimal point is the number it will give me. Now you all are saying, well, we probably want two because, uh, well, or three, because in the math world, it's common for three. If we're talking finances, we're, we're probably gonna make that 0.2, okay? 0.2. So I'm going to stay with my example. And the second thing I had in my notes is creating a field width. Like how, how wide do I want this to be? So I'm going to go back to my system.out.printf and I'm going to put the temperature is, and then I have my percent sign, and now I'm going to put a number in front of the decimal point. So 10.3. Now this time when I run it, it's gonna give me a field width for my variable, for my argument temp of size 10. So if I run it, my output will be the temp is, and I notice there's a bunch of spaces now before the 234.56. Okay, so it brought in a little bit of a change. What if I go back up and say the temp is, um, let's, just, let's just make it uh, five. See what happens with five. When I run it, my 5.3 gives me, okay, I can, I, I notice in my output, it's now the temp is, and yeah, there's less spaces there. So that five can adjust my field width. Um, something you probably won't use very much, but it's good to know that it's there. Now, the last thing I wanna do is I wanna do something called a flag. And I'm gonna go back up into my program and I have double temp equals, and now I'm gonna put 9999234.567, all right? Now, as we know, our variables don't store commas but we'd like to get a comma to display. So now I'm gonna come down in here and in my system.out.printf, I have the temp is, 
I'm going to get rid of the five and now I'm going to put in this flag of a comma. And what's going to happen now when I run it, it's going to make my output look even nicer, hopefully, drum roll. And you see it becomes nine comma, nine, nine, nine comma, two, three, four, point five, six, seven. So I'm able to do all this and it cleans it up and it makes it a whole lot nicer. Now with string format, I said this is for the programmer because he'll be able to see it in the console window. I'd like this to also work with my GUI. So I'm going to take a look at setting this up to store in a way that I can put it in a GUI. All right, so I created a, a string variable and I'm going to call it my out string because that's just what I like, it reminds me of my output all the time. And now in my program, I'm going to say out str equals, and now I'm going to put string dot format. So this is a way for me to set up so that I can use this whole idea of the string format to display something in a GUI. Well, luckily down here, I already have some, uh, some notes and what I'm, oh, oh, geez, I went a little too far. And I have set up a J option pane dot show message dialog box null of, and I want to make this outstruck. So with a little luck, using similar things that I've just done with my console, I'm now going to be able to display a GUI that will have the temperature formatted in a really nice way for me. And I want to go up and make sure, yeah, I do have import.javax.swing.joptionpane. And with a little luck, I'll be able to run this. Fingers crossed, the drum roll, please. And I have a mistake. Where did, where did my mistake come in? Somebody say it? Capital S. Capital sure. S, right. So my, it should be outstra equals capital S for string. So slowly, you should be starting to get used to understanding what the console window looks like. And hopefully, our error messages look like. Hopefully, that comes from doing all the code listings and getting practice after practice of uh, messing up and being able to find where your mistakes were. Cross my fingers again, drum roll. Brrr, that's just me. And all of a sudden, I should be getting, I did get a message box pop up. Did, could you all see the message box? No. <laughs> it didn't come up. Well, I know it, it doesn't do that sometimes once in a while, but it pops up. It says the temp is, and there's my nine comma 999. So I was able to put those flags in. I was able to format the three decimal places, and it all looks good. Great outstanding, wonderful. Okay. We I'm going to come use, back. Yes. We can't use the uh, system print out F for a dialogue message. System dot out dot print F. Well, when mm -hmm. you write, when you write a program, remember you're writing it for a user. So when the user runs the program, they don't see the code and they don't see a console window. They see a GUI that pops up. So again, the console window down at the bottom with the system.out.printf is great for you as the coder. But you need to be able to make it so everything is in GUIs. So if somebody runs your program, that's what they get to see. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make another string. Um, variable. I'm just going to call it name. And I'm going to give name the value of Ray J. Johnson. I should put junior on there, but let's not go with that. So this time in my J option pane, I want to change and I want to do a new um, output. So I'm going to come in here and put the name is the name is, 
and percent sign. And if I remember right, a moment ago, I said it was an F for a double. Well, does anybody know what it is to, to make this specifier for a string? It's not F. Take a guess. S. Well, I hear an S. So let's go percent S, double quotes, comma, name. So you can see I'm holding a spot for a string this time versus when I did it a moment ago for a double. And if I run it, I use the S and you probably can't see it, but the, the name, I spelled name wrong, that's all right, is, and it displays Ray Johnson Jr. Okay, any questions? Yeah, just a quick, um, I'm not sure. I lost. We might get to it later, but okay. uh, when you're when you're formatting like a number, yep. uh, you have to manipulate it later. Is that going to be a problem? Has like commas and stuff in there, or? Well, remember it's inside the string and will follow right after per the percent sign. So, okay. for example, we have. Um, let's go back to this one. Output string is the name is, and then we had percent s, and the temp is, and this time I'm going to put the percent uh, comma point two. So now I have two of those specifiers in there. So name is going to go with the percent s. So now comma, and now I'm going to put in temp. And that will go in the percent comma point two to format that. So remember out here on the right, it's going to be an argument list to go along with this format string. Okay. And hopefully if I run it, it works better if I do a drum roll. Brrr, and you didn't put F after two. You are correct. Thank you. Let's try it again. Percent comma point two F. And you can't see it, but it actually works. Okay, good. So coming back to my notes, you know, we talked about the precision. We, uh, it's 0.2F, we'll round it to two decimal places. We do know that it'll round up. We played with some numbers. We had the field width, that was the number out in front. You know, I could just do 20, I can do 20.2, which is a combination with the precision. We talked about a flag of a comma. Uh, and again, the precision and the flag are the ones that are the most common. We talked about string formatting uses an S instead of an F. We didn't talk about integer. Anybody uh, know what the integer one is? D. P? D. As in D. Dog. D. Yes. Okay. And still staying along with the string format, we looked at how we manipulated it to produce something for our message box. And that was to use the output equals string dot format to get it ready, then do our message box with the uh, output string. Okay, so that's the way the book has it. It's great, it's fantastic, it's fine. At this point, you don't have to listen, but there's a second method that is around that used to be in the, in the textbook and it's using this thing called decimal format class okay so you, you started to see these um where it's a word in this case decimal formatter and then it's some kind of variable name in this case formatter would be in there equals new decimal format you, you've seen that layout and then we're going to have some sort of layout in the parentheses inside the double quotes. And what you can do is manipulate what's inside those double quotes. For example, if inside the double quotes we had the pound sign, comma, pound, pound, zero, point, zero, zero pounds. What this is saying is I want to do a layout. The pound signs are optional, okay? The pound signs are optional. Uh, but if I go pound, comma, pound, pound, zero, 
That means if I need it, it will put a comma in. The zero right in front of the decimal point says there will always be at least one number in front of the decimal point. The two zeros that come after the decimal point say there will always be two zeros after the decimal point. And then I have a pound which says if needed, go to a third decimal place. So the way I would create that is I would create an out string that says your number is in double quotes, then the plus followed by formatter, which is the name I made up up here. We could call it any name we want, but it's formatter. And then I want to do dot format, which means it will adopt this format. And then I would put a variable name inside of there. So looking at it syntax wise is kind of boring, but if I go and I share my screen again, and I load up the program that I gave you for today on D2L. Um, we come in and I see in line nine, something java.text.decimal format. I need that for that decimal format class, okay? I come in and I say, here's the syntax. Decimal format equals formatter. That's the, the variable name that we, to use equals new format and then I have this pound comma pound pound zero point zero zero pound this will format to three decimal places the third one is if needed there will always be at least two so if I was to run this program I uh, declare a variable double which is num I have input j option pane dot show input dialog please enter a number num1 equals double dot parse double of my input. And I now come down here and say your output is your numbers is numbers. How about your number is, I have a carriage return in there. And then I have the end of the string, the double quotes, plus formatter dot format num1, which says if I need commas and so on, it'll take care of all that. So if I run it, in this example, and I do, and again, I, I know you folks can't see it, but I'm putting in one, two, three, four, five, point one, two, three, four, five. And my output will come out to be your number is one, two, comma, three, four, five, point one, two, three. Professor. It, it needed it, so it displayed it. Yes. You find this. Uh, other method to be more efficient? Using the decimal format class, I do like it better because yeah. once you format it, my line 23 says decimal format, formatter equals new form. I can use formatter over and over and over again. I don't have to keep worrying about how I inserted it before. Agreed. I like that a whole okay. lot better. Right. So that's the first example in this in this one the second example is the string dot format so there's an example of both ways in this program that i provided for you today and again this second way i should put in in the note part here uh that this is section 3.10 of the book uses the string dot format okay the, the other way is this decimal format formatter that's available for you other questions so now all of your program output will look pretty i won't see a, a decimal displayed that looks like 1.4896732481853262 right you'll round it to three decimal places or if it's money it'll be two decimal places uh if i'm thinking money i like this 0. 0.00, 0 because if it's 50 cents, it'll make 0 0.50, not just 0 0.5. So something to tuck away. I'm going to stop sharing now. Any other questions? Okay, good. Hearing none, I want you to do a little program. 
and I'm going to have you display the output using both methods. So really, you could grab that program I gave to you today and hang on to that. But I want the user to be allowed to um, input three doubles. And I want you to display the three doubles sorted. Got it? They're going to input num1, num2, and num3. And I want you to print out the lowest, the middle, and the highest. Sounds easy. Let's hope so. Questions? I'm going to create breakout rooms. And, oh, somebody left. We only have 17 participants now.